Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Why did you let him die? I didn't. I didn't. Why did you let him I did all I could to save him. Why did you let him die? Gotta believe me, I did my best. I did all I could. No, get him off me, please! Get him off me! So the great surgeon has peed in his pants. <laughs> Men must pay for their mistakes. No. Welcome back, so you've just heard the trailer for The Devil's Honey. This is disc number 60 in the Italian collection from 88 Films. Let's read the blurb from the website. It says, talk about unsafe sex. When horror maestro Lucio Fulci of Zombie Flesh Eaters and Enigma fame turned his hand to an erotic thriller, the results were always going to be outrageous. A tale of revenge and S&M, The Devil's Honey makes Fifty Shades of Grey look positively vanilla. Brett Halsey of A Cat in the Brain and Four Times That Night plays a brilliant surgeon who, when distracted by personal problems, accidentally causes a patient to die in his surgery. Determined to avenge this, the man's grief-crazed former lover kidnaps the doc and undertakes a very kinky type of vengeance. There's no safe word here. ET Films are proud to present a little-known gem from an exploitation legend for the very first time and completely uncut in this beautiful Blu-ray edition. Special features. I think you can still get these with the limited edition soft touch slipcase. It's a two key scan from the original vault materials. Um, exclusive dust and scratch restoration carried out in the UK. An uncompressed English and Italian audio with newly translated subtitles for the latter. Audio commentary by critic and writer Sam Denigan. And the Devil's Halsey, an interview with actor Brett Halsey. Wildflower, an interview with actress Corinne Celery. Uh, producing Honey, an interview with producer Vincenzo Salvani, uh, The Devil Sax, an interview with composer Claudio Natilli, uh, Stephen Thrower on The Devil's Honey, Lucio Fulci, an audio essay by Tro Haworth, author of Splintered Visions, Lucio Fulci and his films, alternate opening, alternate Italian titles and credits, trailer and reversible cover art. This is Region Unlocked, uh, so A, B and C. Uh, audio is DTS HD MA Dual Mono. Pictures HD 1080p 185.1. The runtime is 1 hour and 23 minutes approx. 
The languages are both English and Italian and the subtitles are English. So I've never seen this movie but I know it purely by its reputation. Um, in, that in the last two years I want to say it was released in America and everyone started getting all hot and heavy about the ridiculous artwork of a man playing saxophone to a woman's vagina. Um, and I'm going to try and keep it as po-faced in the review as possible. Uh, and it looked ridiculous, and Filchy's name was attached to it, and I knew one day I was going to own it, and I was actually going to import it because I do enjoy owning the Filchy catalogue whenever they're released to try and pick those movies up on Blu-ray because I genuinely am a fan of the guy's work. I think he is a very versatile director with many talents that are sadly nowadays more nominally known as the kind of shocking gore, uh, as opposed to some of the, the, the more deft work that he was doing in the very late 60s and through to about the mid 70s where he was doing all sorts of different weird shit. So, The Devil's Honey being a kind of erotic thriller did pique my interest, but this is, you know, this is like beyond the halfway mark of the 80s Filchy, which is a slippery slope into what would ultimately be the decline of Filchy. So, you've always got to watch what you're doing with these movies, and what it comes down to is what he's more invested in. The more he's invested with the subject matter, a la a movie like Cat in the Brain, the more interesting the subject matter is, the less interest he's in in the you know the subject matter I think something like demonia um, the more inconsistent the viewing I think that is where I'm aiming for in this review um, The Devil's Honey throws a lot at the viewer and I mean it's beautifully shot and he's got all the kind of Vaseline across the screen I said Vaseline steady yourself Vaseline across the camera lens uh, to give that kind of soft, dreamlike, softcore erotic porn um, feel that you would expect of a movie of this ilk. There is plenty of tit, plenty of bush, uh, plenty of male rump as well, so you're getting a lot of that. Um, no penis, just stressing that. There is no penis in this movie because, uh, you know, that would be pushing it one step too far. I mean, in a movie where a man plays a brass instrument right up against a woman's clunge. Um, and the, the the portrayal of obsession of the death of a lover um, is done surprisingly well here. But that's about the only thing that's done well here. I mean, it's shot beautifully and the soundtrack is a bit monotonous after a while. The repetitive use of the same motif played on a saxophone over and over and over again gets a bit grating. Um, But the big issue with this movie is, for an erotic thriller, this is surprisingly not erotic at all in any way, shape or form. It reminded me of that episode of Friends where Monica tries to seduce someone using food. And she's like, oh, I love the way that these breadsticks feel between my fingers and all that stuff. And then eventually she looks like a kind of like fridge leftover Freddy Krueger. Um, that's kind of what this is like. Just every scene that's supposed to be sexual just really isn't. It's actually surprisingly vanilla. And that's what like I, I I can't imagine ever wanting to have a wank over Fifty Shades of Grey and I can't imagine ever having a wank over The Devil's Honey so there we go they, they share that in common it's just I don't find it erotic at all uh, which is sad because I do at times believe that our, our main heroine here um, or antagonist depending on how you look at it is is genuinely pining for something she, she, she plays the melodramatic over the top grief ridden you know, um, former lover incredibly well. And Brett Halsey, for what he's doing in this movie, he's pretty good as well. Um, It's just it doesn't really deliver what I thought it was going to. It's a whole lot of kind of S&M scenes set up, kind of post the kidnapping, which happens about, what, 35, 40 minutes into this movie before saxophone guy dies and to be honest a lot of the clips we see back because we're constantly doing flashbacks he doesn't appear to be 
that much of a nice guy. He, he's constantly getting her to do things that it's not just out with her comfort level, but she feels that she's been pressurised into doing, which I think is quite interesting when you see her take the dominant hand against Halsey's character, where she really is, she is the, she's very much in the dominant position. Um, I mean, there's there's a couple of things here that make me think no one's ever had kinky sex that's been involved with this. Like when she's pouring um, like red hot wax on his back and you would think that a xenomorph had been severed and the acid blood had dropped onto someone the way this thing is sizzling and a popping. Um, you know, that's not how candle... You know, everyone that's lit a candle before knows what candle wax feels like. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't sizzle when it's his skin. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Um, and then there's just a whole lot of, you know, just awkward, non-sexual kind of sexy talk. Like, just, like, really, like, the worst pillow talk you've ever heard in your entire life. And the movie, like, ultimately ends in a kind of somewhat optimistic place. I mean, she finds love in the man who accidentally killed her former lover, and he's found his place as submissive sex slave to her. Uh, I, I imagine it doesn't hurt that he's a surgeon and probably has quite a bit of cash as well. That probably helps. Um, but yeah, it's, it, to be honest, it's a bit of a mess of a movie. Um, what it wants to do is really get into that kind of the power play stuff, but it takes too long to get into it. Uh, like I say, the more we find out about the kind of saxophone player, former lover, the less I like him as a character. Um, he, he seems like at times not a nice guy. Um, and she like seems to be really caught up about someone who we see most of the interactions when you get flashbacks that she's not vehemently in love with him. So it kind of it feels at odds with it. But when it gets to the power play stuff, they should have just done that in the movie. They should just made a whole movie, a la something like a Proto Fifty Shades of Grey, where you know a woman who's been wronged in the past uh, like feels the need to control men and does that sexually that would work a lot better than a lot of the stuff that goes on here like I say it's shot beautifully um, and acting surprisingly strong if not at times a little over the top um, the score I liked the main theme but it's just used far too much in the movie and it ends in a way which felt sadly predictable if you've been paying attention to the movie and yeah, if this was at any point supposed to be erotic feeling or erotic in tone, it, it misses the mark quite a bit. Um, as well, as well off its target um, pretty much all the way through. It's an interesting one in Filch's back catalogue, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know how much he was invested in this at all. It just feels like Filchy going through the motions here. There doesn't feel much of his personality at all in this movie. Uh, you know, there could have been a sea of other Italian directors at the time that could have probably done this movie and done it just exactly the same. Which is a sad thing because I like to think that Vil Filci has a particular style that is instantly recognisable on screen when you start watching it. That's kind of not here for this movie. Yes, it's bonkers. Yes, we can all tee-hee-hee -hee about the fact that it has a man playing a saxophone against a woman's vagina, which is a very interesting and hugely entertaining scene and something you're unlikely to see anywhere else uh, in any other movie but you know is this a great Filchy movie no not really is this a great erotic thriller no not really is this one of the better ones in the Italian collection uh, not really it's, 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 this is I, I, I would I don't even think I liked it if I'm honest um, so yeah let's just do the grade I really don't have anything else to say about this movie at all it was a bit of a letdown because this has been one that I've been building up in my brain for quite some time and now it's arrived. I'm kind of like, yeah, that's kind of hoping it wasn't going to be like this and turns out it was. Um, overall, with this one, it's a 2.5 out of 5. Somewhere between I didn't like it and I liked it. I think that's fair. I, I certainly didn't hate it by any stretch of the imagination. There's enough stuff going on in here which is kind of cool. I will say this about the 88 films uh, release. The print is brilliant the sound is excellent and the special features, all of the special features are great. So if you are a Fulci completist or someone that just likes like weird slabs of Italian cinema in general, this particular release of The Devil's Honey is definitely worth your time. 
there's enough on this disc to merit the price. 